If you don't have a college degree or any previous experiences in tech, it seems to be hard to get your foot into the door. But that's not always the case. You just gotta find the right entry point, meaning the right job to get you in. Once you're in, you get the connections, the experiences that allow you to get even higher pay for what you do. So in today's video, we are going to talk about all different kinds of positions that you can get into tech. And how exactly you can get there. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Vicky May, and I am a full-time software engineer living in New York City. In this channel, you're gonna learn about how to learn to code, web development, and all things related to tech. Let's get into our topic. The first job that I wanted to talk about is. Web developer, also known as software engineer, software developer, full stack engineer, however you want to call them. These are the titles that you might see on either Indeed.com, Monster.com, wherever that you're looking for jobs. Mostly, maybe on LinkedIn, you'll see all these different titles. But at the end of the day, you are hired as someone who is. To see as a programmer who program a application, a software, a mobile app to the business to offer them the value. Now, for this type of jobs, I think it's helpful if you are currently pursuing a degree either in computer science or software engineering. Sometimes it might also work if you are in either electrical engineering or some sort of engineering science. Degree. That being said, obviously, if you have a degree or if you have the options to look for a degree in software engineering or computer science, obviously, that's going to be the perfect fit for this kind of jobs. But in this video, we're not going to talk about you know having a degree or having the experience. We're going to talk about the route that actually going to lead you to get into these positions without having those type of degrees and certifications. Recruiters are looking into. Candidates that actually have a lot of work experience instead of actually having the degree or the you know certificate for those type of jobs. So what I do recommend to get hired as a web developer, a software developer, is actually learning how to program. So this is step number one. Like you need to learn how to program to be able to actually get hired as a web developer or software developer. You also Need to demonstrate your skill sets, meaning that you'll need to either build projects that shows that you know how to code, or you need to contribute to open source to show that you understand a large code base, or you would have to showcase somehow at your current job that you learned to program and your skill is helping the business to earn more money. And this is the ultimate, you know. Way to showcase that your skill set is providing business value, and hence why recruiters should hire you as a web developer. And now, just so you know, I have a whole playlist of videos that coaching you and giving you step by step how exactly you can do that. Resources that you can find online to help you to learn on your own. What kind of materials that you should learn in what order? Those are the informations I would provide, especially in this channel. Make sure to check out that playlist. So the second job that is UX designer. So what do UX designers do? So UX designers are the ones that actually design the prototypes before the developers actually implement that prototype into code. So I'll give you a really simple example. If you have an app idea. And you vision how this app idea is going to look like. You're gonna talk to a designer first. You're not gonna talk to a developer first. You're gonna have to talk to a designer to come up with the vision of what you were thinking. Like, what is the best way to have the user interact with your mobile app? That is the idea. So UX designers are the one that works really closely with the product owner or product manager, and they are trying. To figure out what is the best user experience that is going to bring to the user by designing a prototype.
prototype. And that being said, they would also need to work really closely with the developers because they would have to kind of like understand what is doable in code versus what they can design. It's a teamwork, it's a collaboration with products and developers. So let's think about or talk about what does UX designers really need. Well, I would say that if you have a background in arts or you are generally love arts, love the visuals, you might be actually having a really great chance of becoming a UX designer. UX design is a very creative field. Just like the other creative fields, what you need is not just a degree to show that you're good at arts, right? Because art is art. Like you have to basically be a visioner. You have to have a portfolio of projects that you can showcase your style and how you interpret that to demonstrate on your projects. So that being said, what I'm trying to say is you would have to have a portfolio of projects and being able to express yourself not only through arts but also through presentation. And those are the skill sets that we're looking for. In order to learn all these skills and being able to design all these things, you might wonder, what do you use as a tool to design all these prototypes? And you asking the right questions because as a UX designer, you will need to learn to how to use these tools to design. You might have a vision, but it's important to know what tools that allows you to create those prototypes. So in the industry standards, I would say that you would need to either learn Figma, Sketch, or Adobe XD. Those are the really popular softwares that designers use to create prototype. And I would almost say that probably Figma is the best one so far to learn, but obviously people have different opinions about what tools that you should be using, what is the best tools to be using. If you don't have a preference, I would definitely recommend Figma, but if you have a preference, um, go with your instinct. Honestly, nowadays, there's so many boot camps for everything that you can think of. I would say that if you are not a self-disciplined person and you don't like to self-teach, um, definitely a great option to look out for designing boot camps or um, boot camps that help you to learn the skills. Learning on your own is definitely possible and I've linked down all these courses that I found on Udemy that helps you to learn about design and how you can learn from scratch. If you're getting values from this video, definitely give me a thumbs up, like smash it. The third position or jobs that you should look into is sales engineers. So now sales engineers are actually a sales position. It's not a engineering position, though you might need to understand really well about that product. So depending on what products that your company is trying to sell to the business. But if you are good at sales or you have the background or experiences in sales and generally selling things really thrive you, you might be really good at this job. And what is great about this job is that you'll have a base salary. So you you don't have to worry that you're not gonna be just out there hustling all the time because your livelihood is based on that. You'll have a base salary and usually it's pretty high to start with and obviously you'll have bonuses and commissions based on how many sales you make so you thrive to you know perform better and you definitely have the motivations to keep going. So I think that as a sales engineer you'll have to have really good communication skills, really good at sales, really good at talking on the phone with clients, demoing products and also you know working with the team to make sure that whatever sales that you make that you promise to your customers will be delivered and implemented in engineering. The fourth position I would say is lucrative or easier to enter is QA. So this role that I'm talking about, especially when you don't have a degree or you don't have the experience for it, you usually will start out as a manual QA, 
meaning that you will be testing the services or the products that the company is selling for their customers. And you would be not the technical support, but you'll be in the engineering department and working along with developers. And the good thing about being a QA is that you're working really, really, really close with engineers. That allows you to explore your options in engineering. There are so many different options in engineering. I don't even want to start listing because there are so many. There's data science, data analyst, um, front end, back end, full stack developers, mobile developers, project manager, product manager, scrum master, that there's just so many different options. Being able to be in the same department as the rest of the people who are also in the same department allow you to explore different options. And the good thing about being a QA is you can actually grow in your career to become a QA engineer. So what a QA engineer do is actually automated a lot of testings and making sure that everything is running as the script and making sure that all the features that are developed through developers are passing all those tests so we're not introducing new bugs into the system. So you would be writing you know, automated testings, end-to-end -end testings, and a ton of different test scripts to test the code. I've listed also a roadmap down in the description down below, so make sure to check out that if you are interested in becoming a QA or looking into that career path. Okay, the last but not the least is social media manager. Now, this is such a new up and coming role that you probably been hearing a lot in the past maybe three, five years. And I think it's one of the most fast growing role that you can possibly think of. Social media managers are the ones that are helping the business to grow on their social presence. So think about how to create really native content that really fits into that social media platform. Kind of like what I'm doing right here, but I'm doing it as part time, but you'll be doing it as full time. And I would also think that if you're looking into a job like this, probably having the experience in the past that you helped a local business to grow their social media account, their YouTube channel, or you're managing your own personal brand, those are really good experience that you can put on your resume to help you to stand out amongst other candidates who are looking for the same kind of role. In general, like you really enjoy creating stories and Snapchats or Instagram posts or reels, TikTok, all of that, this might be a great role for you because every day you'll be expected to create a lot of different pieces of content out on different social media platforms. That was so much information and so many different positions allow you to get into tech without having a college degree or the experience for it. Let me know which one that you are actually interested in because I would love to know about that because that helps me to create more content that is related to you. I also created a ton of videos that help you to get into tech to help you to learn more about about web development as well as just learning to code. Make sure to check out those videos are listed over here. Click it, click it, click it, and be safe. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Adios.